Joseph Kursky here to tell you about, demonstrate, and get you thinking about ESRI story maps, particularly for education. One of the things that have long fascinated people about maps, for centuries really, is because maps are a rich medium for telling stories. Think about all the elements in a single map. The colors, the scale, the content, all combine to impart a lot of information in a small amount of space. Think about why you might be watching this video. Chances are, like me, you were drawn to maps, perhaps at an early age. Let's face it, you love maps and believe they are powerful tools for education and society. Well, thanks to the convergence of Geographic Information Systems, or GIS, cloud-based computing, mobile communications, and computer technologies, we have more tools than ever to tell stories through maps. Specifically, we have access to ArcGIS, a system developed by ESRI that allows people to make wise decisions about our planet with geographic information. Story maps use ArcGIS from web servers and the cloud to combine base maps, thematic maps, tabular data, pop-ups, and other functionalities into intelligent maps, as you see here. These maps can be viewed on multiple devices, from smartphones to tablets to laptop computers and more. And these maps can be shared. They are not confined to one person's computer or phone, but rather, through a single URL, they can be shared with colleagues around the world. ESRI Story Maps combine intelligent web maps with web applications and templates that incorporate text, multimedia sense, such as photographs and video, and interactive functions. Story Maps inform, educate, entertain, and inspire people about a wide variety of topics. Folks, maps can now tell stories in new ways. Maps can take you from globe to street corner in seconds. They can dynamically show change over time. They can organize and present charts, graphs, photos, and video. With the sweep of a fingertip across a tablet, you can compare one map theme with another, analyze change over time across a whole continent, or in your own neighborhood. You can post your own information to maps. You can cast votes on maps, and much more. These maps are not just simple reference documents that answer such questions as, Where is Kyrgyzstan? Oh, okay. Next. No. Rather, they are dynamic documents that let you analyze, investigate, and ask questions of. In fact, as I wrote in a recent essay, a good map teaches you to ask a better question. One of the reasons why my colleagues on the ESRI education team and I are so excited about story maps is their applicability to education. Story maps can enhance the teaching and learning of many topics within many disciplines across all levels, from primary to university level, and in formal and informal settings, from the classroom to the field to the library to the museum in outdoor settings, from Girl Scouts to boys clubs to after school programs. Let me give you a few examples. I'm going to start with storymaps.esri.com, as you can see right here. I'm going to search on Titanic. I'm going to open that map that appears. By using a story map to visualize where the passengers are that on the Titanic were from, you can enhance teaching and learning not just about that fateful voyage, but about passenger liners in the early 20th century, about immigration trends and the resulting demographic and social changes, and much more. By using a story map to examine the 10 most damaging U.S. hurricanes of all time, you can enhance teaching and learning about the spatial pattern of hurricanes, past and present. Where was the most damaging hurricane? What would happen if this same hurricane reoccurred in the same exact location? Why do hurricanes have the pattern that they do? 
which coasts see the most frequent hurricane landfalls? Are severe hurricanes becoming more or less numerous over time? During what months of the year are these hurricanes most frequent and why? What cities have been most severely impacted by hurricanes? What has been put into place to mitigate hurricanes, such as seawalls, early warning systems, and so on? And have these efforts been effective? You could use both of these examples in a variety of courses, ranging from physical geography to cultural geography, to history to demography to climatology and much more. In this series of short videos, I have three goals. One, to show you how to access and use a gallery of existing story maps. Two, to explore techniques and best practices for map-based storytelling. And three, to help enable you to make your own story maps. Thanks!